Okay, so as Hania said uh, a moment ago, you all should know the drill by now. Uh, our agenda is basically the same slide, rinse and repeat, because I like the structure to support learning and your brains already know what to expect and when. Uh, this should help with questions and organizing them. So for the record, uh, what the game is all about and how we should prepare it and debriefing how we should drive uh, further change, further work with our participants um, using this game as our base. Uh, so our beloved uh, document here is uh, also extremely important. It will be a little different though from uh, previous documents uh, because the game itself is different. You will also notice differences in the debriefing. We have our uh, we have our document right here uh, and uh, here as you probably imagine uh, our staff requirements and everything like that but uh, as for this game those uh, two elements will be brought up uh, in great detail, even greater, I believe, than what is written down in the, in the design document. So pay attention to this element. Uh, okay, so let's get uh, down to business. Uh, what this is? No, this is not what I wanted. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. There, no. What's, what's going on? Uh, I have problems with sharing a screen. Oh, there we go. Sorry. Uh, great. So, structure of the game. Okay. This time we start with uh, a lot of uh, targeting and triggering colors um, because the premise of this game is about violence. So, technically, violence uh, in the cyber commu community. Uh, this game may become dark. It has a very dark premise, it has a very dark lore behind it, and uh, everything concerning this game is meant for uh, audience that can uh, handle the weight and also for facilitators that can handle the weight. So, uh, what you can see is one of my uh, favorite uh, logo types uh, being this Facebook logo with splatters of blood all over it, because uh, that's basically many, 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 many young people's experience using social media. Uh, I've been working extensively with uh, kids that were uh, bullied online. Some were uh, pushed to the brink of uh, suicidal tendencies. Of course, uh, bullying online was not the only thing uh, but as I have a record of working with kids that either had a suicide attempt or were near to it, uh, it became clear that this is a very relevant subject. And so the game was uh, conceived years, years ago uh, when I was working with these, uh, with these kids. So the game itself was extensively tested. It is prepared to uh, work even uh, on the audience that is already, uh, how should I say, touched by this uh, motives, touched by this problem. So that's, uh, that's my uh, premise for the beginning. Uh, what the game is about. So we in this game wish, wish to simulate an experience of cyberbullying in a controlled environment. I will repeat this. We want to really simulate cyberbullying. It's not like we were going to pretend something. This will be creation of a safe environment, controlled environment, environment where we can first instigate a situation which is toxic, and then we can dismantle it in the debriefing. We can work on it later on. We want uh, to allow participants to witness how their own involvement uh, works in this process, how it's not a matter of one malicious person uh, being a general douchebag on the internet. Uh, it's the sum of little, um, little uh, um, pebbles that makes the, the avalanche. Um, 
then uh, we wish to show them how being anonymous, being a part of the crowd, um, instigates mindless uh, cruelty. How uh, anonymity uh, takes away from our perspective uh, of the other person as a person, as someone we can empathize with. We treat people on the screen as uh, something less than a human, especially if we don't see their faces. We just, we're just seeing their uh, typed responses, being deprived of seeing uh, body language uh, and uh, mimic and tone of voice really dehumanizes people we interact online with. And then we want to learn more about our participants, of course, to learn more about themselves through this shared experience. It is uh, a common theme. Uh, shared hardships uh, make for a good a group. Group is, if the hardships are put in a correct perspective, the group grows stronger, not weaker through them. Then our primary goal. Uh, this, is, this is a game about responsibility. Responsibility is the main theme reoccurring throughout the game. Uh, and it's a responsibility on multiple levels. First of all, in the narration of the story narrative, Second of all, in the outcome of the story, responsibility is everything here. So uh, our specific goal is participants take responsibility for radical uh, and toxic behaviors online. That's that. So uh, we want our participants to uh, immerse in a certain mood. This uh, time, uh, a little bit of guilt technically, mindfulness, most of all, of course, but realization of their responsibility. Uh, we want to simulate anonymity and, and expose, uh, to expose carelessness that, is, that it instigates. Uh, we want to show uh, inevitable consequences uh, and handle these consequences. That's why I outlined it here and uh, encourage to responsible behavior. Secondary goals, which there always are, uh, learn more about our group, strengthen the fortitude of participants in an online environment. This, this game really transitions really well into instant uh, gains in this field. If the game is done right, uh, participants report improvement in their awareness and durability in an online situation and uh, introduce knowledge about cyberbullying and mob mentality. So there. Uh, disclaimer as always. As this game relies on already existing social bonds within a group and requires at least a modicum of performative abilities from participants, Organizing an acting workshop beforehand is highly recommended. So this group was created, uh, this game was created not uh, in mind with uh, like uh, random people just being put there in the, in the room, uh, but rather this game was mostly for the people that had some shared experiences. Uh, as I said before, I was conducting this game for kids that were on a summer camp uh, where they had their safe space. They met uh, sometimes only friends uh, in their lives on those camps. They had them there. So uh, um, generally, this is for the end of the spectrum of tightly knit communities. Uh, for example, classes. Uh, like a class uh, of kids from school is a wonderful, uh, wonderful target for the game because they already possess some uh, kind of uh, previous experience with each other. Because uh, what I found out was if the game was created, uh, was conducted on people that had uh, next to none previous experience, 
it was generally flattened. Why? Because when we are in the first contact with new people, we subconsciously tend to behave nicer to each other. Uh, so that was a factor, but also we tend to restrain our behaviors. So everything was subdued. Uh, and that's not the way to go here. Uh, yes, so let's carry on. Generally, this time, uh, you will fool your participants a little bit because they will not... What's the what's face? Uh, they cannot... Uh, for, you cannot tell them that this is a game about bullying. This is something that must be avoided at all costs. You cannot tell them that this is a game about being mean. Because what you should tell them is that this is a free form. What is a free form? Free form is a game uh, where there is, of course, a performance but the, the participants are also actors in the performance, but uh, this performance uh, has this division of audience and performers, so some of them will be uh, chosen as performers, while others are audience, but audience has a direct contribution to this show, participates actively in this show, and this performance is meant to emulate an online experience. This is not a lie because it will emulate an online experience, but you should not uh, like put them into uh, a state of mind like, hey kids, today we're gonna make a game about being mean to each other. That's not the way to go. The, you will want to have their natural behaviors without this foreknowledge uh, of the end game. Uh, pa, 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 pa. Lore of the story, uh, you will <laughs> uh, notice this as uh, in previous games, there was a lot of a lot said about the lore here. There's basically none uh, because setting is modern. The game takes place in our day-to-day -day reality. This is something that is, as said before, a simulation of actual situations rather than completely separate uh, fantasy world. So the setting assumes that uh, all the occurrences in the game take place in our contemporary world with all its cultural and social framework left recognizably without change. Uh, because relatability is the name of the game here, alongside responsibility. Online space so uh, the entirety of game will be assumed to take place in form of multiple videos posted on YouTube, even though no actual videos will be recorded. Uh, all, uh, all the interactions will be acting and all the interactions will be acting. So you will not technically record anything, but every act of the story, every scene of the story will require a modicum of suspension of disbelief as a recording, which you can see. More on that later. Uh, we've been talking about the premise uh, before, but now to uh, dig deeper into this, the, what, what goes out of this premise, uh, that uh, a small selected part of participants will act as YouTubers slash streamers because I use these terms interchangeably. And those streamers, those YouTubers, are creating their own channel and producing thematic content. So several of your participants from that group selected or mm, like volunteering, although I not recommend volunteers, uh, several of them will each play as a fictional YouTuber, fictional streamer, putting 
their content online. And the rest of the participants, as uh, is stated below, will act as audience actively interacting with those channels and in their comment sections. So everything that uh, audience will do, not like most of what audience will do, they will not be screaming at them, saying things to them. There will not, uh, they will not be actively uh, conversing with uh, that streamer that acts before them, as this is not possible in YouTube situation but they will be writing comments. And trust me, oh, their comments are, this is a heavy stuff. So technically, most of their interactions will be conducted through a closed and private Facebook group set up for the game and, and I cannot stress this enough, deleted, obliterated after the game. So as nothing that was created on this group ever sees the light of day again and deletion of this game will be a part of the briefing process destroying like unsubscribing to this situation is a part of the debriefing process as a part of releasing tension and going out of your role disclaimer while deciding upon the subject who will play as YouTuber streamer, please bear in mind that this will be stressful uh, experience that might result in emotional discomfort. With this in mind, choose participants that are in high standing among their peers and are generally liked. You try not to, you try to, uh, that's why you need a knit group to choose people which have natural tendency to be leaders, to be high in the status of the group, because uh, this is to be avoided at all costs. If, uh, for example, uh, you will have uh, a person uh, which is in social uh, therapeutic, therapeutic terms, social technical terms called uh, a suicide volunteer. There are people that are generally low in the standing of the group, but have this uh, lust for attention. And so they feel obliged to volunteer to everything that, that is thrown at them. You try to not put this person there as if this person has not significant standing in the group is rather used to being bullied or being uh, disregarded, that person may actually suffer emotional harm through the conduct of the game, which we would like to avoid. We are at the starting point, but maybe, as I need to have a sip of my coffee, maybe there are some questions right now Mm. Okay, please do not be afraid. This is. I would yes. like to ask. Um, um, uh, it is clear. It is clear about the YouTubers. Like mm -hmm. we select from four to seven people, and it is clear of their profile. I would like. I would like to ask about the audience. Mm. Uh, from your experience, what is the maximum people that can be there in the audience? I believe I have stated this in the design document and we can check it right now. Mm. Uh, ba -ba -ba this is it. So, players composition. Uh, hmm. Huh. Okay. Uh, I am nearly certain that this should be specified here somewhere. Uh, but uh, oh, 15 and um, no less than 15 and no more than 30 people. That's that's the general. No less than 15 to create this. Um, audience really to be an audience like the anonymous crowd in which you can hide because this is a part of the mechanics here so something else 
Okay. Uh, please uh, do not be uh, afraid of this game. This is still a game. This is still a very in the end fun experience after which, which participants with deep emotional traumas taken from the real life were able to express themselves and even fight their fears. Uh, afterwards, they really uh, reported to me that this made them stronger, this made them braver. But uh, I will be uh, like um, keeping to this all around idea of uh, pointing things out in capital letters so that we will not uh, lose important uh, safety measures as the safety measures are here very important. My beloved starting point, the starting point of the game. This game tells the story of streamers who were connected by the media outlets with the teenager's suicide. Uh, you are presented this uh, as the, those uh, online authorities and filmmakers. Uh, wait. Ah, okay. So what will you present to, uh, how they will be informed about this is that uh, media outlets actually connected them with a kid that killed himself. Mm, how? Because he was a subscriber and he was very close with their channels. They were his favorites. Uh, so uh, their content was something that he saturated, he or she, doesn't matter, uh, saturated him or herself uh, with all, within all his free time. And the scandal ensues and the tensions will boil up because uh, audiences will react in many ways to the situations presented. So this is the starting point. Basically, they will know in the beginning what's going on as the first act, uh, first scene is about this. Disclaimer, uh, and this is another <laughs> important disclaimer. This game in no way, shape or form will focus on the suicide itself. Uh, we do not care if this kid actually committed uh, suicide due to the content or not, because the main storyline of the game uh, is an excuse to simulate a situation in which the tension grows to a great degree. Uh, opinions will get radicalized and interaction uh, transits into hate or hate speech. Uh, people asked me if this game can be about something else than suicide, as this doesn't look good. And like it can be, people are very, very afraid to tackle the subject of suicide. But you shouldn't be, as this isn't relevant here. And most of the kids actually have this in mind. Like they've been exposed to it in media. They've been exposed to this in their speaking. Uh, teenagers are generally angsty. And uh, this subject not being uh, like, if you try to go around the subject, it will pop up uncontrolled and going through it generally uh, makes it more stable. And I assure you, I've tried it with many different groups of uh, teenagers. Technical issues, uh, not many of them, but uh, the game should be conducted by two facilitators of which one is a counselor trained in observation of people's emotions and uh, appropri appropriating actions in case of emotional emergency. So one person should definitely be uh, there to control the flow of, this, of the things. Uh, mainly not to overreact. This is very important. Overreaction is worse than no action at all. Uh, I can explain why I think uh, that is the case later. Uh, uh, 
the f- okay so the the other facilitator will be an actor but i will speak about them later the facebook group must be must be prepared earlier for the participants to log to it to only log to it you do not allow them to have any um, creative manner in this uh, group it will, must be secret it must be closed they receive uh, an invitation to the group they accept it that's all they need to do they are on the group uh, and the fluent in for internet connection is crucial because they will be using their own cell phones people must have their own cell phones with an ability to use facebook and uh, people that do not have cell phones cannot take place in the game people who do not have internet on their cell phones cannot play the game also people who, who cannot have the facebook app on the you can of, of course use something else than facebook we can focus on this later but everybody must be able to be there together uh okay Whew. uh as you can see we're going at a very uh, fast pace today uh that's intentional because i believe you will have many questions uh, but we are at the gameplay stage already after half an hour uh, so there will be workshop in the beginning there will be briefing four scenes which will be the main driving factor of the story in between the scenes participants playing as youtubers slash streamers will have an opportunity to make reaction videos this is very important as uh, scenes are scripted but their reaction videos are not. This is a place where they can actually um, outlet their acting uh, skills and have contribution to the game. And then we will have a debriefing. So workshop. If you do not have YouTubers chosen upfront, this is the moment during this workshop. Make sure you create a situation in which every participant speaks out loud in front of the group and observe the, their behavior as well as group reactions. So I'm putting here, if for some reason you do not know the group, a trained counselor will be instantly able to tell when people take voice and speak out loud, who is actually with a good standing in the group and who is just being loud as part of their persona because if a person has a difficulty to take voice at all well that disqualifies the person completely like this person would be eaten alive in this game and we wouldn't want anyone to uh, live through this uh, participants all should say a few words about themselves so this is the moment where they uh, of course, in the workshop, you can do whatever you wish, but this element must be there. Participants all should say a few words about themselves. Participants should at um, this point be logged onto the Facebook group uh, by one of the facilitators. And during their presentation, they show that they are logged. And you, for example, ask them to comment something to uh, check if everything works. More on that later. Uh, and one of the facilitators should then make a presentation of a sample content video and underneath this video they will be commenting to get grips of the mechanics so basically what workshop is first you do some dilly dally things to warm them up and uh, you ask them to speak out loud in front of the group and then one of the facilitators the actor shows them how the content video uh, actually looks. So this actor is supposed to view a content video on YouTube, understand what a content video is, how he should act during this video, and then role play this video in front of participants. And they will comment, comment upon it. And the Facebook group. Uh, what is important about this Facebook group? Make sure that the face, uh, Facebook group is, as I said before, terminated after the game. 
I'm telling you right now how to do it if for some reason you don't know. This is done through every participant leaving the group and then facilitator, which is the uh, owner of the group, which is the one that started the group, deletes it. If every person group, because if it goes in a different manner, the group will be still alive. So if the uh, facilitator just leaves the group, the group is still functional. He must be the only, the last person in the group to be able to remove it. So we will speak more on in the debriefing part about how to arrange a event around uh, leaving this group. But the Facebook group will work uh, I will say this already now, but, but we will focus on this later, will work in this uh, manner. Each YouTuber will be posting uh, a, um, a thread, a topic of their video. One of the facilitators, most of the time this is work for the counselor, will input this video saying this is this person and this is the subject of the video. There's nothing else inside this post, but people can comment underneath while this participant acts his video, what they think. And they can comment, they can uh, speak to each other many times people will be making photos and making memes during this conversation. This is also allowed as you can take a screenshot at any point of the video. And there will be under this video in this post, a long list of comments, which will be a complete mayhem, chaos. It will be hard to get over, but participants will have time to try to read through it and understand what's going on. And counselor as well is a person that will be uh, reading these comments. I see that the chat flared up. Is there any question? Okay. Uh, yes, there is one from me. Uh -huh. uh, sorry, uh, I, I'm a, I'm a little bit confused. So we have like we show them a, a video. You said we we ha we have to have a sample of a video or no? Or for the YouTube actor will act. Okay. the video in front of them. The actor must understand what he is doing. That's why I said about watching the video, but he must show how to act a video. Like you okay. cannot show okay. them the video. The person must be there. And for example, I will now act the video. Yo, 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 my homies, I'm gonna show you today how to play the game. So Perfect. that's the idea. I'm not oh, playing the game and not making the video, but it's a presentation. Okay, cool. Yeah. And uh, another one, so if we have uh, three YouTubers, for example, we have to have uh, three threads, three different subjects posted, like uh, every YouTuber has a different subject. More. Every YouTuber will have as many threads as, many as threads. he will have videos, he or she. Okay. So there will be multiple things to, con to uh, comment, and what you will see is that they will link threads, crisscross them, re-upload them. There will be a lot of things going on inside this uh, Facebook group. If okay, it won't perfect. be a lot of things going on, then uh, your kid's never been on Facebook. But uh, I, I, I seriously do not think this will be the case. I am every single time amazed how much they can actually spam uh, into, this, into this medium. Great. Uh, Here now. Question answers. Yes. Yes. yes, yes. Something else? Zaran is also asking what if they make screenshots. I'm not sure if I follow. Uh -huh. Do you understand the question? Ah, yes. Okay. This is something that we will be talking about more in the safety rules, but great that you ask. Uh, one of the most important rules of live action role play games is that don't be a dick. Um, it's a quote. It's not... Um, this Please. is really, I'm really saying this. <laughs> I'm really saying this. And everyone, every person in live action RPG community will tell you that this is the case. So you must tell people up front 
that what happens in the group stays in the group. And if somebody makes a screenshot and then reposts it, use it online, works with other people using this, like makes fun of a person using this, that person should be uh, ashamed of oneself. And you should really make an emphasis. You can do this. I am unable to stop you. I will not take your cell phone and see if you haven't made something, but you will be a like objectively an evil person doing this. But there is another safety here. Uh, that's why we choose people which have high standing amongst their peers, because a person with high standing can obliterate a hater. Like they can kill them with laughter or uh, use this, spin it around as something funny and not uh, taken seriously, not taken personally. In uh, seven, 11 runs of this game, I have 11 runs of this game, never ever was this a problem later on. Because people, when trained right, when uh, really uh, appealed to their communal uh, experience and living through the game and going through the briefing together and seeing all the effects of the game and seeing all the situations, most of the time they are by themselves inclined not to do this. They have their own ideas that this is uh, something that should really be deleted and not propagated further on. Uh, okay. Is this uh, the answer? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Uh, okay, I feel believe that in the chat there was... Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. Great. So. Yes? Somebody? I heard a voice. Okay, uh, let's carry on then. Uh, I will speak more about safety measures later on. So, briefing. It's pretty, pretty simple because you need to explain the rules. One of the facilitators uh, prepares the streamers and the second briefs and hypes the audience. And how does it look generally? Uh, generally, counselor is the one to prepare streamers and work with them during their briefing. And uh, actor is the one working with the audience training, interactions with them, hyping them up. That's how it goes. The briefing ends with the presentation of the channels. This is very important thing because um, we treat this as part of the briefing as we brief participants, the audience, what channels there will actually be. I will speak a lot about the channels in a moment, but bear in mind that participants playing as streamers will at this point come forth uh, and have a 30 seconds presentation of their channel, which is typical to YouTube. On YouTube, you when you enter someone's channel, there's like this tagged video in which a person in few words or few shots, a uh, few scenes shows what the channel is about and what is the merit of watching the channel. So this is what um, should appear at this point. Uh, so briefing for the audience. Pretty simple, although few steps. Participants first react to an example of a content video performed by a facilitator. This is another content video, different content video. It's not like one is enough. One is for everyone during workshops. And when the streamers go away, actor shows another one and modulates the reactions. What is important is that this uh, video should trigger reactions. It should be uh, conceived by this actor up front what is relevant to this group in this social context, in this country, in this town. Like it should be something that would actually uh, rustle their feathers a little bit instigate them to react. And it should be tailored specifically for that particular group. So what must be, after they just do whatever they wish, this actor goes on 
explaining and said that no content created during the game may leave the game, that they may react to videos in any way they deem okay, memes, uh, reactions, comments, provided it will be all in a form of online activity. They will never, they may never speak to YouTubers without an express permission because this breaks the immersion. Uh, what else? Uh, I will tell you maybe if I will be able in the end about a very uh, a situation that you wish to avoid at all costs. I would like somebody to remind me uh, about the wall of shame. So the wall of shame uh, is something that I must speak in a, uh, in a moment. They may not participants interact with the streamers in any way, uh, vocally or physically, but uh, they may be asked, and here is where the volunteers are absolutely uh, cool, uh, and all the volunteers may be, may, be, may be chosen, but there's a caveat to it, but I will speak about this later, and they may be asked to participate in scenes uh, as an additional uh, characters, one-off, and that they should react strongly and may go over the top in their reactions. This is not to be uh, fortified. It's not like you instigate, just go. No, no, you just say, you can go over the top if you wish, just react strongly. This is a game, we simulate situations, show situations from the real life. And their personal opinions on the subject are secondary to the show. We do not uh, consider these right now. What what what's going on is a simulation of what might occur, occur. This is briefing for the audience. Now, briefing for the YouTubers slash streamers. Participants chosen as YouTubers as streamers choose the subject of their channel from the list. Where is the list? I will show you right now. So, when you scroll a little bit uh, down, uh, you will see that here's an information about um, the streamers. And there are uh, several uh, typical content channels that you might find online. They are specified. Who are you playing? From now on, uh, it doesn't matter who you really are you try to play as this person and you should go over the top. When they choose a channel, they should go for it. The less this, uh, this uh, character they will be playing will be reminiscent of their person, the less, uh, less close to home they will play, the better. As everything that will trigger uh, the harm, emotional harm to this uh, character will not affect them as much. We try to uh, tell them that they should go over the top. I have uh, uh, prepared references here, but uh, bear in mind that these references are in Polish. These are uh, from Polish YouTube. So what I suggest strongly is that if you decide that your streamers should be able to see like uh, a proposition of what do you mean by this type of content, you should have some of these uh, relevant to your own online stage. But most of the time, I never find those useful. I never, they, they know what they're doing. They know better than I do uh, what content is there on the internet. And sometimes they were telling me that there is another type of channel that they would like to do. No, they're choosing from this uh, finite list. So this is this is uh, this is that. Uh, blah 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 blah. Uh, um, so they are supposed to create a nickname and for their character. So not name like. I don't know, Jon Snow, whatever. No, they must call themselves in the way that this character would be known 
on their challenge, uh, channel. For example, when I do, I myself, Marcin Rzeczkowski, when I do any activity online, everything I do is tagged as my nickname, which is Topur, which is an axe, like big axe. And everybody online known me rather by the name Topur than uh, Marcin Rzeczkowski. So they are creating a nick name for the character. This is another step to um, distance them from the character they will be playing, another safety measure. They are supposed to create the name for their channel, for example, uh, Taktyczny Topur Imperialny, which is actually a name of my channel. Uh, never mind, this, this is like insert auto promotion. Of promotion. So they choose one relationship from the list uh, to another YouTuber and give it to another YouTuber streamer. So there is a list also provided in the design document of short relations, like because uh, uh, most of the streamers actually have some kind of relationship with each other. They know uh, people that are actually relevant know themselves. Sometimes they collaborate, sometimes they have feuds, they exist. So uh, when they choose this relationship, they give it to someone. They do not take it themselves. They, not, they are not choosing for themselves, rather they are choosing for another person, as this is a hook to start they, their actions. For example, if you have a feud with another streamer, you may attack him or her in uh, your content. Cool. That's something that happens on daily basis on the internet. They are given some time to prepare their first content video. Uh, so they may think what they would tell about their uh, channel, what would they do on their channel, how would they sell it um, in this first presentation. And they should not be long and show what a participant imagines as a regular content of their channel. This is something you should uh, point out Then try to make it, this video, this first presentation, as regular as normal. Try to act as this is something that this person actually does for a living. So that's that. And here we go into the start of the game, the tragedy. YouTuber streamers are informed up front so they know that this is going to happen, uh, about the situation mm, and they will be able to, that, and they should reenact this knowledge in their content videos uh, right after uh, the, the, the information hits the public. So how this is going, this may be confusing at first, but I will tell you how it's going to be. So in the final phase of the briefing, as they are showing their channel, they are not referring to the tragedy. They're just showing their regular content. But as the first scene starts, they, they should be playing uh, their, tact and their uh, normal content, but also in knowledge what happened. They must be prepared um, for what's going to happen. They can, if they so choose, comment on the current situation in the media, the tragedy of a family, attack of the news on themselves. Uh, uh, then, uh, bearing in mind that those videos are their priv uh, primary source of, of revenue. So this is something also that needs to be pointed out to the streamers that they live from it. It's not something they do as hobby. This is what they do for a living. They have committed a long time ago. They have committed a significant portion of their lives to crafting this online persona, uh, online channel, which grants them money. However, they have been uh, elected to the position of prominence uh, due uh, to uh, their regular content. So they need to remember that they may uh, comment on the situation, but also actually uh, what their audience is there for uh, is their content. 
maybe their audience do not want them to react to the situation. So this is the dilemma that they will need to face. Do they uh, act immediately or not? Do they downplay this situation or not? So that's, that's that. Disclaimer. Uh, references. Oh, this is what I said before. Uh, so Polish edition of the game. Uh, so what I've been saying before, if you see fit, you should find something relevant in your languages, respectively. Scenes. As uh, mentioned, scenes will be an improvised act. All the YouTubers, streamers, take part in every scene. Uh, the last scene is the exception. It may be an exception, but more on that later. Few of the scenes require additional characters, which may be played by participants, and here volunteers, thumbs up, or one of the facilitators. So at some point, uh, you may decide that this is better to be given to an actor. Facilitator informs everybody about the subject of the scene, and gives them time to prepare. So during the game, there are like this short pauses between scenes, but it doesn't mean that the game itself is at halt. Okay, some people may uh, decide that they need to go to bathroom or have a drink of w or whatever, but most of the time what I have experienced is that even in those short moments, uh, five, six minutes, no more, People are frantically typing and interacting on the, on the Facebook uh, page. They're actively uh, doing things like, for example, many of them, uh, in my groups it was extremely common, create memes. They make a screenshot, they draw things on it uh, in their phone, and they post those memes. And then people make reactionary memes about the memes. This is something that I have experienced a lot. Facilitator informs... Uh, uh, ah, okay, so said already. Every scene is a separate video. So facilitator, most likely the counselor, as he will be or she will be... Uh, in the safest spot to do it, creates beforehand. Uh, so when they are informed what's gonna go, uh, what's gonna happen, one of the facilitators prepares a thread. The video of the the scene, uh, like scene one, video of what's gonna happen, and uh, then people may comment upon this, may react to this, like a normal video, like one of the videos, videos made by participants. Okay. Now we are in the territory of the scenes. Are there, because I'm going to go uh, deeper into the scenes themselves, maybe there are some questions at this point. Okay, so the first scene, teenagers' suicide. It requires, of course, all the scenes are described in the design document. Uh, it requires additional character, the journalist. And uh, the scene requires the journalist uh, to talk uh, at least for a moment with, with each of the YouTubers. So imagine a situation that would be natural uh, in your environment where the YouTubers would be like hanging around or something and journalist tries to get information from them or it can be made in uh, like segmented um, reviews, uh, like uh, not reviews, uh, interviews with them. I suggest that uh, the journalist is, in fact, uh, a facilitator, an actor, and he or she has prepared some questions for the, um, 
for the YouTubers. It doesn't matter what's going to happen, even if there will be one question. What do you think about the tragedy? How your audience respect uh, responds to that? Have you heard any get any letters or messages uh, about it? Whatever. It doesn't matter. What the point of the scene is, is so that in this compilation of uh, talks with all the YouTubers, they may officially represent their standpoint. So this is this is it, and this is basically about what the scene uh, this what uh, what this scene is about. After this scene, they will make reaction videos. So after every scene, most the last scene does not count. So. After this scene, they will make reaction videos to what can they react to. Either they can continue with their normal content, they can react to the situation, or they can react to other YouTubers, uh, what they said during this video, or they can react to the comments posted under this video. So there's a lot of things to speak about and they, trust me, they will not have problem deciding, uh, like figuring out what to talk about in this video. They will not be imagining everything because there's a lot of uh, points they can touch upon. And also this uh, reaction video cannot be long. Minute, two minutes, like sometimes, make this clear that the counselor should uh, like uh, be there to give them information that time is up, they should be ending. How he or she should do it. What I like to do while conducting this game, I'm most of the times counselor, I am sitting at the back of the, of the room uh, or in the front of the room, it depends on the situation, where the stage is. I'm trying to be in such a position where a person that is playing does not really see me, but I can see all the audience because I'm looking predominantly at the audience. I want to see their reactions. And when I know that the time is up, I make this gesture and I tell audience beforehand that when I make this gesture, they should also make this gesture all the audience. Why? Because this is a s- information to a streamer, the actor that is playing at this, at this stage, that his or she's time is nearly up, that, she, that they should be finishing. It's not like stop right there, seize all activities, like shut up and go away. No, they should be informed that when you see this sign, you should be slowly getting to a point like making a logical conclusion to what you were saying. But this is my uh, tactics. Uh, I find it to work pretty pretty decently. Uh, And it doesn't uh, put uh, more pressure on a person like, uh, 30 seconds are over, go away. Nothing like that, like calmly. Because if they are really deeply acting, they may choose to act for a little longer, even though the sign is visible, because they need it, they need, and in the later stages of the game, their expression is very important. So we must uh, put this up front for them that if they see the sign, it's not like instant end, just go to a point, go to a point, finish the situation. So this is the first scene and reaction videos. The second scene, weird funeral requires several audition characters. A journalist harassing YouTubers. So imagine the scene as like this highly publicized, very crowded funeral with lots of people uh, bringing candles and whatnot, media out there, cameras. Nobody allows uh, the family to actually uh, to actually live through this situation. This is obnoxious action to the extreme. Not only did they lost a child, uh, they are 
being right now as a center of attention, as like uh, cheap, uh, cheap publicity stunt of uh, media outlets. And in all this are the YouTubers. They were invited to this funeral uh, by not the family, but their more or less sponsors because it is, they should be there. That's like, it was important for the kid. And the journalist out there can be played by a participant. You can take a volunteer, counselor decides if this volunteer goes or not, but because there may be several volunteers. And uh, the journalist is paying no respect to anything that's going on. This person should be as obnoxious as possible. Uh, now, grieving parents of the teenager, those people also can be uh, taken from audience. Two, two people can be, or one decided on what, what, what you wish to achieve. Uh, they are there because the scene requires all YouTubers, and they know that, they have information about it, to express condolences, condolences to the parents of the deceased. So in this strange situation where there's this reporter trying to speak to them, they may want to speak to each other. Uh, they need to find a way to approach these parents and the parents may act in many different ways. They may attack them. They may be solemn. They may be whatnot. That's why this role can be given to participants to allow them to show how they imagine the situation to work. And of course, this situation also will be a separate thread and you can comment, like participants will be able to comment on the occurrences during this weird funeral. Now, the influence, ah, of course, after the weird funeral, there are reaction videos like before. The cycle continues. Influences on the siege. So the scene is a press conference. You like stage, press conference with chairs and everything, microphones. Where one of the facilitators, and this is important that this is one of the facilitators, and that's the role of moderator. And all the participants, everybody on the audience, everybody, every people, every person that is sitting in the audience, play as journalists that may ask question. This is mayhem because they will be screaming all over the place, uh, standing up. Uh, what the audience should uh, do, however, they should play their roles. So they should say what media agency they represent. So, you know, like, uh, uh, like uh, John, uh, John Turner, uh, New York Times, what would you tell us about blah, blah, blah. So they should like, imagine themselves standing up and speaking to a microphone which does not exist and role-playing the entire situation and why facilitator should be the mediator because facilitator will allow them to speak okay if not chaos will ensue all hell will break loose uh, carrying on of course reaction videos because this uh, press conference most of the time is very traumatic for the players. If the uh, participants playing as uh, as public as the audience are really geared up towards uh, being obnoxious and uh, doing uh, harassing things or uh, participants were harassed in the comment sections of their videos, which happens, uh, this may be very unpleasant. And here is where I tell you about uh, a phenomenon which is called the wall of shame or stoning. Both of the names are appropriate. This is a phenomenon, psychological, uh, sociological phenomenon in which if the person stands alone and is constantly asked about something, that person, if it lasts long enough, feels like being thrown stones at. Uh, 
if a person is not prepared for this, or if the person possesses a feeling that these people there are uh, hostile, and YouTubers, if there are negative informations in their comment sections, will believe that uh, media outlets are hostile, they will have this feeling of being thrown stones at. That's why there's no, not, a, not a situation where there's only one streamer at the time, because then this will be really, would be traumatic. They are sitting there together and they respond together who believes he can take the, the, the burden at the time. Uh, and the second uh, safety switch here is the moderator, which can stop the process, like divert attention or comment uh, to uh, diffuse the situation if needs be. So this is, uh, uh, now we're at the situation one year later, because after the previous scene, this, the influencers under siege, which I've been talking about with and the wall of shame and stuff, they may decide to end their channel. They may decide that this is their last video. After this conference, they all prepare the video in which they summarize the situation. And this is this last video. Uh, uh, like the, the, the last video they make during the game, they may decide that this is the last video of their channel, that they close the shop and go away. Uh, and in this situation, one year later, this is an epilogue. No one will interact from the outside uh, uh, with them if uh, there is a... I will wait. Sorry, I have lost my train of thoughts for a second. This is a situation which they, uh, first of all, perform a short speech about what happened to their online career. So this is a part where that is moderated. No one can interrupt them. It's like facilitator points to a, a participant, tell us what happened with this and that. And they make a monologue. And afterwards, what I like to do is to put a table there with chairs and tell them, well, you're in the bar. Who would come to this meeting? Which have you, do you still have contact with each other? Uh, and sometimes participants decide that, no, I don't give a, anything about it. I, I just leave. I don't want to have anything to do with these people, with this community. Count me out. But sometimes they want to meet up uh, and they can have this short conversation where they spill their beans, spill their emotions in front of entire public. Um, this element was added to the game after a few first runs as a gratification for the people playing. As they will know that no one will interrupt them, there will be no... Uh, pressure, it will be just them and their characters, they uh, can make this a catharsic, a catharsic moment for, the, for themselves. Okay, so this is everything that will happen during the game. Uh, shortly about the videos and the commentary concerning up to date occurrences of the game this may be i have spoken about this before uh, part of the typical content of the channel it may be in their reaction videos because i have found that some people will have stalwart and persistent need to keep up the uh, running of their channel they role play so hard that they decide that every single of their reaction videos is not referring to anything at all. They just go on, they, they make their content, they, they try to carry on. This is a very interesting occurrence, but it happens. Uh, they can also make drama video, in, uh, which is response to content concerning activity of another channel or channels, offline activity of another streamer, and they may create gossip, they may make things out, 
they may do whatever, they may lie, cheat, whatever, they may do whatever they wish to make a drama. Uh, the tone of drama video needs to uh, needs not to be offensive, but it can, and they should know about it. They can shift the blame around their, themselves and things like that, which happens. Uh, and by the way, things here that I have stated here about what can be those uh, content videos, uh, in the first runs of the game, I wasn't informing participants what they can do in their reaction videos. This is what occurred to me. This is what happened after several runs. These three options are the most uh, persistently reappearing uh, situations and behaviors that I have noticed. Therefore, I am pointing them out here to you and you should decide whether you give them to your participants or not. So there. And briefing more on that later. Do we have any questions before I go to the technical part of the preparations? We're nearly at the end. I have one question. Yes. Um, so you said um, that, um, for example, YouTubers, they perform, but uh, like they're not um, recorded as videos. Nope. Um, so my question is more like uh, technical in this part. Uh, because, um, like, we need to shoot videos in order to disseminate this activity. Uh, right. I don't, like, it's... Um, ah, okay, so it's, it's a requirement? Yeah, it's a requirement for us as uh, subcontractors. Mm -hmm. And we also need to take pictures. Mm. Uh, so, um, I would like to ask you which part is kind of less sensitive in order to do this, okay. to report these workshops. Because the I am, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. yes, I understand. You need to fulfill the requirements when you shoot uh, the opening videos, those videos at which they present their channel are a good moment because they are very neutral, nothing bad happened yet. This is a very good, uh, very good moment and the one year later uh, meeting. The, like, you're standing before the camera and you tell what happened to the channel. And, but this time, as you will have uh, every participant speaking firstly on their own, you can ask, can I record what you're saying right now? And the person says, yes, of course. Uh, and then uh, if they choose to uh, gather around the table and meet up with each other, uh, I believe this would be a, an appropriate moment to uh, record this. It will not be very dynamic most of the time, uh, but I think I wouldn't risk filming any other section of this game as it would be in clear viol violation of the rule that what happens during the game stays within the game. So, so there. But you can tell your participants that as this is a requirement and we need to have a part of your performance, is it okay with you if we film the first uh, section, like your pre presentations? And then after everything is said and done, you may ask them, are you okay with me filming you uh, speaking about the effects of the situation on your channel? Okay. Is it cool? Great. Anybody else? Oh, yes, because I have uh, another confusion, sorry, about what uh, Ralitza said. Mm -hmm. I remember that Aaron also said something about the requirement of recording, and I kept in mind that it's not so mandatory, and I have to ask Hania, like, um, I, I'm a little bit confused now, because I don't know if is it mandatory or it's not like a very strict part of the process to record all the games and uh, the things that we develop with our participants? Because I remember that Aaron said uh, maybe in a previous workshop, yes, but I don't, I don't uh, remember exactly what. Uh, he said that is not, uh, maybe I'm just uh, confused, but I have to make it Can clear I now. 
I can answer this, uh, Isabella. Uh, okay. I believe that when uh, what Aaron said, we were talking about an online game. So that was not uh, required to re record the whole game, of course, uh, just taking some screenshots. In this case, we're talking about the okay. offline games. Of course, you don't have to, re to record the whole game. Uh, what we ask, uh, what most of you, including the cost quotation, is to produce a video so about the game. So this means oh, there will oh, be perfect. someone video maker recording some of the some part of the activity not uh, all because it's like four hours and a half so it won't be super comfortable but yeah you you don't have to record the whole game to like we don't need a proof from you or an evidence that you played no we just need some product that we can use to to exploit the result you know to disseminate the result of the activities that's it Okay, great. Because I knew about the filmmaker, but uh, I thought it's uh, mandatory for the monitoring side. But now it's clear. Thank you so much. No, 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 no. And no, no, now no. Uh, a question for Martin. Um, we will work with kids from schools. Uh, we already mm -hmm. have a group in mind. And most probably we will have a classroom where to work with them or something mm -hmm. like this. Uh, and for uh, because of this, we are very close to their teachers. And sometimes they require to be present in their work in these kind of workshops. Uh, what do you suggest? We because I think that it's a kind of uh, game that will get the, the participants out of the mood if maybe a teacher or any other Definitely. person will be there. So uh, I just wanted to ask, what do the, you think uh, about this? The presence of an authority which is associated by them with being uh, graded, even if they have the best of possible relationships with their teacher, will be detrimental to the activity as a whole. That's, that's, okay. a, that's a certainty. I know this for a fact. As we made some games in schools as well, and I always uh, seen that people, rather than playing the game, were prolonging the interactions that were typical to their daily behavior in front of their um, in front of their teacher. So, if you can arrange not being there, then, then them not being there, that that would be best. Okay, cool. cool. That's all for me. Thank you so much. <laughs> Anything else? Anybody else? I mean, oh, I mean, I it's also a question. The other screen. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm really confused. I, I'm not sure I get um, any of the stuff. I um, I get the structure. I get the point. I just don't. Uh, uh, you lost me at audiences at the, uh, being in role on the press conferences, and then in the drama video and. Uh, I just, I, I would really, uh, I kind of lost the logic. I don't, I have a problems connecting suicide. I don't know where this cyber bullying is supposed to happen. Is it the scene number three? Just, okay. my reaction is just, I'm not sure I get anything. I just want to be honest. <laughs> so let's rephrase this. The game looks like this. most of to answer the most important question where is the cyberbullying in the cyberspace on the facebook group in the comments of the videos what are the videos the videos are stand up acts made by participants playing as streamers and these are their reaction videos and reaction videos can be of one of these they may play those situations, uh, that, that kind of content. And also comments will occur under videos of the scenes. Scenes are scripted. And these were this bunch. Every single one of them has a script. Like for example, this scene about journalists asking 
YouTubers what they think about the situation. And they say something. And then in the comments underneath this video on the thread, people from the audience are commenting. And the comments may go very different ways. After this happens, after the scene, every single YouTuber may create, well, has to create one of these. So we have a scene, everybody plays the scene together, and then YouTubers one by one go in front of entire audience and they make one of these and they are also commented. Then the next scene, then the next video and the next scene and the next video until the last scene after which they make no videos. They just summarize the, their experience as a character, not as a player. Have I made it a little clearer to you? Because if you say that you don't understand anything, I'm not really certain what should I explain. Well, now I get it that the scenes are all played together. Now, now not I like together. That's why. Or, mm -hmm. Okay, so scenes are uh, together. Uh, can the uh, YouTubers respond to the comments they receive in a oh, comment? uh, Of course, of course, yes, of course. Okay. They should, they will. At some point they won't because they will not have enough energy to do it anymore. But okay. yes. Okay. I thought that uh, YouTubers do the scenes and not everyone. <laughs> I don't know why. YouTubers, they are together in the scene, of course, but participants also take part in the scene. Yeah, like in the number three, the participants are, are the mm -hmm. audience on the press conference. Yes, okay. completely. Okay. They and are the reporters that ask questions and stuff happens. Okay, okay. And the drama video, <laughs> there was something about drama. Drama videos are just the kind of content that may occur. Okay. If one of the YouTubers, streamers, after, for example, we are after this press conference, okay? And on the press conference, for example, me and Hania, Hania, can I use you as my uh, example? Hania? Uh, yeah. Can I, can I use you? For example, me and Hania are YouTubers. Uh, yeah. Uh, and she said something that I interpret as being offensive to me. We are both YouTubers. Martin, mm -hmm. yeah. he made such a horrible videos. Like this person is just insane. Yes. So this is something that happens on the conference. And now it's my time. It's my own video right now, reaction videos. And I want to make a drama video and say that Hanya, you know, she, she tried to slur me there. Yeah. Ah, uh, we won't have any of this. You know what? I've seen her dating uh, three men at the same time and they don't know about each other. Huh? How about that? And I have the proof for that. So this is drama video. I'm talking shit about Hanya uh, in this situation. Okay? That's my decision. I decide to do this because I am insulted by her Are there action. two types? Come again? Two other, other types? Two types? Okay. No problem. For yeah. example, I'm a gamer, so I'm playing. Yeah, the controversies are that, but today, people, we don't care about this. We're here for the games, yeah? I have this new shooter that I would like to show you. It's completely awesome, and I go on speaking about the game. I'm not going into any In controversy. Second? And that, that was the typical content. Uh, so this is the second and the commentary concerning up-to-date occurrences. Mm -hmm. Okay, people, I know I'm supposed to play games now, but full disclosure, I need to drop it out of my chest. I don't care that this kid killed himself. I really don't. And you know why? Because I am painted as a villain of this situation. It's like I told him to do so. I didn't. 
and the fact that he was a fan of my content. Okay, so are you all suicidal because of me? You get it? That's I am referring to the situation. Do you understand three types that may happen? Yes. Great. Kanya? I, I, I'm sorry, I, I love you. I, I would do. never say the things. So. <laughs> okay, anything else? So the point is to see how much everything happening is going to influence on what they record. How much? Yes, actually, yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'm sorry, guys. I yes. just. <laughs> sorry. No, no problem. I believe this is this is great that I have role played these scenes right now. Yes, because this is a further uh, information for you now. Uh, you have more info. So great that you have asked this question. I love when people ask questions because that's why I'm here for to answer these questions to make you understand what's going on. And please remember. Martin made these games and he played it. So it's really hard to to be, you know, inside of something and then explain it for the first time. Yes. Viewers, like commerce. And also we are uh, quite knowledgeable about these games also. So your every question is actually feedback to us. And, you know, we learn from these questions yes. also. Thank you. This way I know how to better describe this. Hmm? No problem. Okay, any other questions? So let's go to the technical preparations for the game. A lot of things that were said just now and before will go down quite nicely to the uh, to the uh, to the elements. As for the debriefing, uh, the briefing because I have of course spoken about the briefing, but this element is relevant because. Here is the definition, what are the responsibilities of actor and what are the uh, uh, responsibilities of counselor. So this actor is technically running the entire game. This person is responsible for times, uh, timestamps, uh, scenes, information given to participants and so on, so on, so on. Counselor, on the other hand, is responsible for running the briefing after the game, uh, monitoring the activity on the Facebook, so knowing what actually goes behind the curtains in the cyber world, and uh, look at uh, gestures and behaviors and uh, tone of interactions in the real life. Why? Did I told you that uh, counselor can uh, keep the track of time with the scenes? It's because I do it. But uh, technically, it might be easier for actor to do it. Uh, you know, the, the timestamps for the videos. Actor most of the time is very involved in technicalities and playing their multitude of roles that are assigned to him. While counselor should be left alone and allow him to focus on things. It's just if he elects to do one of the other things, he may, but he or she, God. Um, but I hope you get the dif differences now. So here are specification of the tasks. Uh, prepare technical aspects of the game. Convey information to the participants. Reenact characters necessary to a given scene. And the counselor conduct uh, acting workshops in the beginning. So the counselor should be the person, uh, it doesn't have to be acting. Maybe you need workshops uh, concerning closeness or openness or speaking out loud, what have you. It is also the counselor's role to decide what type of workshop would be most appropriate for this group in this given situation. So observing participants. Choose people from the audience to take part in the scenes when the script requires it. Because sometimes you will not have volunteers. So the counselor should at this point, when they are needed, be uh, familiar with these people there to pick out a person that would be suited for the situation. 
their activities, their behaviors. Trust me, it tells a lot of things. And one of them is, okay, you go. And this person goes. Brief and prepare participants for the... Uh, Oh, Jesus, sorry, I'm, I'm, like my English sucks. Uh, counselor, not audience, he should uh, prepare uh, participants playing as uh, streamers. I will, when before uh, sending this presentation to you, I will uh, change it and make it okay, because there's a, there's a mistake there. To repeat, actor prepares the audience, Counselor prepares um, streamers. That's that. Uh, okay, so there is it. So now a word about hardware. Technically, you don't need much, but uh, what I would advise you to have is to have a laptop on which you can read the comments because it is really hard to keep track of everything that will be going on in the comment sections using a telephone or a touch or like tablet. A solid uh, large screen would be best because participants uh, commentating can, they have time to scroll at their leisure and uh, uh, react as they wish. But if the counselor is to understand what's going on, he or she should be able to have a proper computer uh, with access to the internet and the group and be able to scroll everything and look um, on the monitor. And the game area, as for the game area, you should have preferably two rooms. Why two rooms? Because in the beginning, when there is a workshop and there briefing, there is a situation where you should separate audience from the YouTubers. And this state of separation should be permanent throughout the game. YouTubers should uh, exit the room where the audience is when they have their time to prepare between the scenes and come back only to play the scenes and then leave again. And then, uh, because this will uh, remove any potential interaction between the scenes uh, of participants from either side. And then the briefing should be conducted in the second room to take participants playing as an audience from their comfort zone and take them to the area that was the comfort zone of the streamers. Because in their brain, whatever happened in that room before, uh, this room is associated with tension. And as they were under more pressure throughout the game, now it's time to take them to a separate room to allow them to alleviate the pressure uh, and be in more comfortable situation. I hope that's clear. Uh, wait. Uh, okay, so a word about acting. What we need is suspension of disbelief. So we need to tell participants, I hope that goes without saying, but if necessary, then point this out that there will not be any videos, but please act as if this is a video. It's not really hard to convey, but maybe it should be there. Engagement. They will take out from this game more if they invest more. The more they invest, the more they take out. If people are not investing in the game, they are just using their phone to play different something, it's their problem. They're not having fun. It should be pointed out in the beginning because for some runs which was very surprising to me it was pretty fun people had distance to to themselves and even though there was a lot of terrible things going on none of them broke none there there was no emotional deep trauma they said that yeah this was really really not pleasant that I, I felt really attacked right now but yeah i expected this i've been to the internet now, facilitator's example, 
is an important aspect. I've been speaking about this in great detail. And a previous analysis of the group would be very in order to meet with them, uh, preferably on a separate occasion to look at them, how they re uh, react, how they act, how what is the dy inner dynamics of the group, so as not to trigger any uh, latent explosives that may be there. And now finally, the preparations. By now, you should all know what I'm going to say. Choose the place to organize the game five to six weeks prior. Choose the special, uh, choose with special care for requirements. So bear in mind what is written down in the document and what I'm saying right now. The counselor and the actor, preferably one month prior. Inform the players about the game. Uh, you can start interacting with them on the Facebook group, but bear in mind, and this is a great disclaimer, that this will not be the same group that you will be using during the game. It must not be the same group. This is like your group to interact with them, not the, ga the game group. And this is preferably done two to three weeks prior. Print all the materials one week prior and uh, remind players, uh, remind about, oh yes, uh, I'm not sure what I was doing here. It was late at night, I guess. Anyways, remind your participants that the game is the next day. So that they better be there. And that's the preparations. Now we go into the briefing. Wait a sec. Yes. Wait a sec. Uh, maybe... have some questions. Yes, yes, great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually, while we, you were talking, I have some um, kind of fundamental question. Yes. <laughs> um, so uh, we have uh, the you, uh, we have the Facebook page yes. where the um, audience should comment on the videos. Yes. Okay, but practically we don't have videos. I have spoken about this in the beginning. Oh. How does it look? Yeah, uh, I, I missed it. Like I was okay, here. No problem. But, uh, yeah. I will point this uh, out now, again. How do we start the discussion? Uh, if it will be okay with you, I can show you on my Facebook. Perfect. Okay, so this may be in order, but this will be my Facebook, so do not get scared away. Okay, I will not uh, create a separate account just for this uh, pretty little situation. So give me just a second. I will I will open up. Uh, uh, gosh, uh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, uh, are you seeing what this on the screen right yes. now? We can see your Gmail. Right. Yay, that's great. Uh, but uh, I want my Facebook. He knows I need him. Oh, no. Uh, wait, this, is, this will be harder than I expected. Uh, so I will have to do a different Marina. thing. I will have to open it up in a different culture. We have it. We have it under control. Please, please, please. This will not take long. Here is everything I need. Come on, work with me. Work with me, my friend. Great. I guess this is good. So while waiting, um, 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 maybe um, if um, you have another question, just put it on chat. My Facebook is ready. I made him possible. So this is my Facebook. This is my beautiful, beautiful avatar. And uh, now we, what we need to do on our Facebook is to start a new group. What? Uh, so group, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you need to, to your snaps, it's set here, uh, create a new group. So I create a new group. The new group is created. Facebook wants a lot of things about this group, but this is irrelevant. So I type here. Uh, wait, I hate to work with the situ in the situation. Blah blah blah. Wait, 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 wait. Facebook has changed recently some things. Oh, okay. So here's privacy. This is what I wanted. Uh, uh, you need to take private. Okay. And here 
it's not visible, it's hidden. Like we're in the hidden group right now. And you can ask people to join. You need to name the group. I named the group. Uh, words, words like daggers. Like daggers. Yes, VLD game one, for example. And I create a, a group. The group is being created. My laptop is being extremely slow as he does. So this is my discussion. And here, as you can see, I can comment something on the fact that I have created the group, but I don't want to do it. But I can do this right here. So I create a post. Uh, there was, for example, we need to create a video, yes? So the video is scene two weird funeral, weird funeral, and I do publish. This is my video. This is everything I need. Uh, because now people Wait, see the scene and mm -hmm. Wolo, Molo, Urso, Dum, Please boy. tell, Martin, please tell when do you do this? When do you post this video, scene two? In which moment of the game? At, in the moment that the scene starts. So, for example, now I make a video for my streaming uh, channel uh, and my name is uh, Gamer Boy Bicek. Gamer Boy Bicek, uh, I'm sorry. And the video, video one, okay? So this is my first video of Gamer Boy. And uh, now when I publish this, I start speaking. And who published this? The person leading the game. So most likely actor will publish this or counselor. This is something for you to decide. But at the moment that Gamer Boy starts speaking, like I say things about the game uh, that I'm playing right now, uh, people can already comment. Mm -hmm. Is it clear right now? Hello? Yes or no? Because or Alicia, if it's not yes. your, your uh, I was... She just showed that, yes, it's there. In Bulgarian, it's the opposite, but uh, yes, I got it. Thank you for the um, uh, really good um, visual example. Yes. Uh, so, uh, yeah, d d look at how pretty this is. Never mind. So I'm changing the situation. We'll get back to the Words Like Daggers webinar. Pa -pa -pa, debriefing for the game. Uh, are there any other questions? Great. So here I have prepared a situation because this debriefing can go uh, in a different way, in the different areas that normal debriefings do. I'm now working around, okay. So a moment fresh after the storm. As you can see, there is no this, my standard technical like hype and stuff because mostly what I have experienced doing this game is that after everything is said and done, people are, are stunned. So what I do is I sit with them in the circle and allow them to vocalize their feelings. But first... Very cool idea. Yes? Yes, but first I take the... My, my phone or laptop at which was the site. And I tell them, okay, now each one of you will stand and leave the group and show on your phone to the rest that they have done so. And in the end, when everyone leaves the group, I delete the group, delete the group. This is a ritual meant there to Leave the fake leave them. Sorry, yes? You mean leave that the fake identity. Okay. 
So standing in front of the group physically and leaving the group like clicking on his his her phone that leaving the group on Facebook. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And now are the general questions, uh, but uh, I ask a lot of their experience about uh, their emotions, and I try to do it in the most uh, personal way possible. Personal meaning. Uh, delicately empathically uh, with regards to their with their to their emotional state and if there are any bleeds there bleed I mean uh, when somebody uh, there are two things bleed in and bleed out if somebody is feeling badly and transition it into the game that's bleed in things from our real world bleed into the game and person is cranky for example but if something bad happens during the game and it inflicts uh, pain upon reality, like person experienced something as a character in the game and now they're feeling sad, that's bleed out. So if there are any bleeds into the reality, uh, then counselor resolves them at the spot. It is really hard for me to tell you what will happen, but this moment is to reassert uh, safety if needs be and make everybody is heard. But most of all, and I would really recommend, give the priority to the streamers. They be were bearing the mo most burden. So this is the moment where they should speak. Sometimes you will see that they don't want to speak. This is what happened to me several times. And this is why, th this is because they, uh, are still in the mindset of the game and they feel that those uh, people looking at them are still that hateful audience. You need to dis 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 diffuse this. And this is a job for a good counselor, if needs be. Now the inception, uh, we integrate it to the one wider context, uh, context and this is the moment where we speak. How do you think why did this happen? Do you don't like each other? Are these people not likable? No, you did this because you allow them to try to get to the reasoning. But the answer is quite obvious. It's the uh, disassociation uh, that anonymity gives. Uh, so which, uh, what, how do you think, which parts of the situation uh, is actually consequence of your actions. You should try to ask every person about that. Do you think uh, that you could be an instigator of hate in real life? Uh, I mean, do you think that you could in real life provoke such things? They will say no or yes, or I'm afraid that I could. It's not, no matter what they answer, you tell them, don't worry. This is pretty much a normal thing. This is an avalanche effect. One person does one thing and then another people follows. Reactions bounce off each other and now uh, bad things start to happen. What difference can you see between this situation, simulation, and real experience? And there will be plenty of differences. First of all, in this situation, people won't be as cruel to each other as in real internet situation because they know them. That's why it's for the uh, knit groups. Uh, and at some point, they will start to see potentially that th these people are in pain. So all in all, this won't be as terrifying as it would be in a real life, in the real cyberbullying. And then the discussion. But the discussion will be interwoven into everything that you do. You need to allow this debriefing to have its own pace and don't rush it. But in the end, this is incredible, uh, incredibly important. You need to rebond the entire group. Uh, first, you need to take care of the biological well-being of people. In, have some candy sweets like uh, chocolate or something, something nice to drink. Everybody must feel biologically satiated 
biologically better. This used up a lot of their glucose. This used up a lot of their strength. And it is shown by researchers that more important for a person during therapy or debriefing or dealing with difficult emotion is to be in good physical condition than in good uh, psychical condition. Those biological elements are very important. Uh, and based on the realistic needs of the group, uh, sometimes a group hug is enough. Sometimes I needed to do an entire uh, prolonged process of regaining trust, like on the collective level. It's what, what happens. But I can guarantee that after you went throughout all this process, I believe that this is the most impactful of the games uh, that we have now in our assortment. Like it realistically brings very rapid change, very rapid improvement. And many times people are relieving the, relieving this game over and over again. And when I was doing this on my camps, people were trying to speak, make a, like this common discussion about things day, days on. So that's that. Uh, I uh, have severely uh, stretched the time, but this is the end. Thank you for your attention. And now I guess we still have questions, yes? It's five though, so I believe that maybe if you really need to go, like you're free to leave, that's fine. The recording will be sent to you. But this is also the time for our last questions if you don't mind to... In my defense, I must say that I have uh, really uh, uh, answered many questions during the, the presentation. So, um, how no for is there something that... <laughs> <laughs> but okay, still, so maybe it wasn't me, it was my computer. Yeah, maybe you have some. Mm -hmm. Okay, so could you tell me? Because I now it would have to on read chat. There is only thanks for preparation and presentation mm -hmm. from Open Space. Ah, uh, oh, <laughs> so cool. <laughs> so, anybody? Well, I, I have one more. <laughs> Uh -huh, okay, no problem. Go for it. I'm okay. listening. Uh, about uh, group, we, uh, us already knowing the group uh, is a mm -hmm. recommendation. Uh, we didn't prepare like entire class. We wanted to publish a call so the kids can uh, sign up. So I'm just want to know, is it okay that people don't know each other? That is not the group that already know each other well. Because it's kind of lose the point if they already know each other. I don't know. I'm I'm thinking: should we recruit people or should we use kids we already know and worked with? And okay. so on. I have speak. I, I was speaking about this at length in the beginning of the presentation. It should be a situation where they know each other. That way, if they know each other, they won't be so cruel, because they will be cruel. The effect of uh, mob mentality, the situation where I believe that if I say one negative thing, well, it's just one negative thing. And then if 15 people post two comments that already 30 comments of which if five are mildly negative, the rest are immediately decided as negative. It's just a matter of volume that will be pouring in on those poor streamers. And if they know each other, it will be more tongue in cheek. They will be more uh, delicate uh, to some extent to each other. And I will be able, you will be able to rebond them later on more easily. If they don't know each other, if this is a, like completely strangers, no matter what you do in the debriefing, if there will be emotional harm done, there will be no society, no group to repair the person back to assure this person that it was just a game. We really like you, you're a great person. And if it, it's not a group, ready group, like ready-made group, like group you have already prepared, then you don't know who has a good standing. So they need to know. This is a prerequisite. They, for, for all intents and purposes, this should be a group that has some previous common experience. The more, the better. Okay, anything else? 
anybody else? Okay, 